Seven mind-blowing mods to blow your mind and improve your Skyrim. Except that these probably won't blow your mind or improve your Skyrim. I just didn't want to call it Skyrim Mods Weekly because it hasn't been weekly for like 100 episodes. So here are the most interesting mods of the past 90 days because that's about the last time I ever looked at mods for Skyrim. That didn't involve penetration of sorts. I just scared all new viewers away. I'm not crazy, I swear to God, subscribe to my channel now. First up, we have the main menu replacer, and this puts all of your main menu shit in the middle, similar to how it was done in Morrowind and Oblivion. It's also multi-language, 60 FPS for a PC master race, continue or new bring up a menu on the left, and loading brings up a menu on the right. He recommends the main menu background replacer without the logo. I usually recommend the main menu wallpaper replacer HD 1080p now with randomizer, but I can understand why he doesn't. But anyways, I just have an unhealthy bias towards Oblivion because that's what I played after school in the 7th grade, and so anything that makes Skyrim more like Oblivion and less like Skyrim, even NPC interaction. Good day. Enough talk. It's you. Hi. I understand the Fighters Guild is hiring new members. Not bad work for some folks. It seems Somerset so I've heard. A much more dangerous Go away, place. fool. Oh, if that's the way you- It's a must download in my book. Next up, I found the HD Unique Handmade Science Overhaul. The idea behind this mod was to make science more organic, like they were made by actual people with real life materials. He thought all the signs looked like they were made by the same professional, even if the shopkeeper was a man, woman, or mushroom. And now there's a greater diversity in skill level. For example, Wind Peak Inn is this great artistic masterpiece, whereas more side in is like some 5th graders art project. No offense to whoever drew this. Signs also now reflect the shop owner. For example, Frost Food Inn is clearly made by a man who loves his son. Do yourself a favor and don't have children, they're good for nothing at all. Okay, shit, Jesus Christ, why'd you let him make your sign then? Okay, so for example, the Radiant Raymond is owned by two Altimer sisters, and now the sign store reflects that femininity. You can even tell that some signs were made by the same artist based on their strokes, and others in the same embroidered style. Bonus mod, get Smim to make your chains actually look like chains. In the vanilla game, they're pretty much two-dimensional, and now they're not. Bonus bonus mod, get signs blowing in the wind to make sure your signs don't look like physics.exe has stopped working. Although they do kind of look like they're hemorrhaging or suffering some kind of seizure, at least they're not so still that you'd start fearing that you're in a virtual world that wasn't fully fleshed out and not real life. Next up we have the Skyrim Radar mod, the first ever mod to add a radar to Skyrim that essentially scans all the NPCs in an area and gives them an icon. Followers turn into yellow dots. Whoa, the hell too? Oh, right, right, I have an invisible mirror clone. Is there something I can help you with? You can go home, I'll take the one that actually exists, thank you. NPCs that you might want to find, like blacksmiths, will have their own special icon. Animals that you might want to butcher to satisfy your sociopathic tendencies can be marked. Guards that you might want to avoid while doing illegal activities. Enemies that you might want to avoid turn red. NPCs that you might have forgot to loot marked with an X. Oh god, Gerda! Oh! Oh, is this for demonstration purposes? I'm sorry. Wait, who the f are you? Celebrimborg. And the map markers even move as you move the body around. Wait, what the f is that? Oh, it's Camilla. That must be the map marker for whore. Even flying trains have their own map markers. Revolutionary. You can even display your health, magicka, and stamina, although to be honest, you probably shouldn't. Even at the smallest sizes, the bars still kind of look horrendous. Not to mention, you can even press the key to zoom out temporarily, and the number of ways you can customize how it looks like on your screen. Overall, it was shockingly non-intrusive without the bars, and actually somewhat helpful in many situations. Would I recommend it? No! Yes, maybe, I don't know. Only if they add a sleuth detection feature, because those are the only NPCs I'm interested in knowing the whereabouts of. Okay, guys, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm very fucked. I just don't like extra shit on my screen, but it's pretty cool. Next up, we have the Great City of Falkreath. A mod that improves upon the city that none of us ever visit unless we're there to pick up the newest thought companion at the Dead Man's Drink. Now, when you enter the city, you'll actually see a stable and, believe it or not, front gates. Inside, you'll notice a clear divide between 
the aristocrats and the peons. The Jarl clearly could not bear laying his special eyes on the plebeian ass blacksmith across the street and now that's fixed. Now this mod does not affect interiors or NPCs, right? Zarya's shop is easily still the most poverty alchemical shop in all of Skyrim, completely void of any hints of original design to the point where I even forgot that she existed. Valkyrie feels like a real city now with walls erected on every side, one whole watchtower and even a chopping block. Bridges with underpasses really flesh out the entire city and the graveyard probably what Falkreath is most known for has been expanded to a size so large that I wouldn't even be surprised if the Tomb Raider came to raid it. I mean the halls of the dead just go on and on and on most likely housing the hundreds of children I've killed throughout the episodes and you know despite all these improvements Runel's house still looks like shit. All the changes serve some kind of purpose, make sense and aren't just extraneous shit to bog down your game. This is how you make Falkreath great again. This is how you make Falkreath more than just the place where you recruit the latest thought at the dead man's drink. Next up we have the MSZ Cathedral, a Christmas themed cathedral for screenshotting purposes that you can get to from the Great Porch. Wow, holy shit, this is in Dragon's Reach? Now in theory, this place is pretty useless. There are no NPCs, there are no quests, there's no content. You can't even play the multiple pianos. But I challenge you to find a more beautiful Christmas-themed cathedral for screenshotting purposes. That's right, didn't think so! This place serves one purpose, to instill Christmas cheer through holiday music while providing the ultimate white backdrop and godly lighting to imbue you with the power you need to take the most magnificently slooty picture of your thotty character to wank off to at night. Wait, what? That's... That's not the purpose. The cathedral is also affected by the weather. So using the console, you can create different lighting conditions to make even better pictures. Although I found that my cathedral was rather resistant to weather changes as it would revert back within 20 seconds. Regardless, I tried shooting an armor mod here and what better armor I could have possibly picked other than Kazawaka Kazakawi's 1600 Isabella de Bourbon court gown UMP. Most people base their armor mods off of their favorite game or even their favorite hentai, with the latter being slightly more likely these days. This person based his off of a 1600s painting by Rodrigo de Villandrando of Isabel de Bourbon, Queen of Spain, the first wife of Philip IV. And I respect that a lot. It's nice seeing people appreciate art besides hentai these days. Not to mention it's so much more challenging to create something as intricate as this, where every inch is filled with gold, pearls, rubies, and top quality craftsmanship of the time. I mean, sure, it looks stiff as a board just about, I don't know, all the time, but hey, it looks good for screenshots, which is the purpose of this cathedral. Next up, we have additional techniques. A mod that allows you to hold projectiles in the air, kind of like Matrix in the Neo or X-Men in Magneto, by holding the spacebar when shooting and then letting it go. There can be six projectiles at a time and they will all collectively target whoever you're facing, basically, whosever health bar is currently being shown, indicated by a crosshair, which is probably one of the most badass things in the world. And this can be done for any projectile spell and arrows, allowing you to take out multiple enemies and plan an escape route for murder, easily target one specific enemy at once even while on the run, kill innocent bystanders who get in the way, the possibilities are literally limitless. And yes, I know this isn't new, it's been done by Space Time Continuum back in 2012, that one mod that probably cost an obscene amount of money on the creation club, but none of them combine that holding alongside homing, creating an effect so fun, so powerful, that you'd probably think it was illegal to do. You'll feel guilty because there's no way anybody should be able to do such a thing. Fortunately, you can kill a little bit of guilt by creating a perk requirement in the ini file as well as setting the max amount of arrows, which probably still isn't gonna make you feel any better about using this. He's gotta come up with something, leave down below what you think would be required for you to be able to be this overpowered. And those are all the mods. Let me know how you enjoy this format. Smaller mods, faster, less complicated, me talking possibly way too fast for a mod video, trying some new things out here. I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again that I've been doing for like the past seven years. Even though this is pretty much the same thing anyways, seriously, any feedback would be very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.
Peace. Looking for some cheap games? Check out G2A.com and use the code MXR to get 3% cash back. Link down below.